never met my cat, have you? She's a Persian. Well, to be accurate, she's a blue long hair. But most people call her a Persian. Beautiful, isn't she? Look at that face. I call her Moggy. 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 What a name to give a cat with connections. We're a proud and ancient people, we cats, with recorded history that goes back long before his lot ever set foot in this country. At the dawn of civilization, when man first started farming the shores of the eastern Mediterranean, we cats were already there, helping him to control mice and other vermin. In ancient Egypt, they actually worshipped us. One of the top Egyptian goddesses was a sacred cat called Bast. And when one of us cats died, the body was embalmed and put in a mummy case just like a human body, while its owner went into deep mourning. We cats travelled along with civilization all over the Mediterranean with the Phoenician traders, to islands like Cyprus. And it was on their ships that we eventually arrived in Britain, which is why to this very day in Norfolk and Suffolk, tabbies are still known as Cyprus cats. We went through rather a ghastly time in the 17th century. The ridiculous notion got round that we were connected with witchcraft. People actually believed that witches could turn themselves into cats, but only nine times. Which may be how that story got around about us having nine lives. Happily, better times were round the corner. And we became honoured house guests. Members of the family, in fact. On our own terms, of course. I wonder what she's thinking. You never quite know where you are with them, you know. Funny animals, cats. Maybe that's why they fascinated generations of writers and artists. Do you remember Rudyard Kipling's The Cat That Walked By Himself? It's the story of the first wild cat that came out of the wild woods and agreed to catch mice for primitive man, but on his own conditions, of course. And he will be kind to babies when he's in the house, just so long as they do not pull his tail too hard. But when he has done that, and between time, and when the moon gets up and night comes, he is the cat that walks by himself, and all places are alike to him. Then he goes out to the wet wild woods or up to the wet wild trees or on the wet wild roofs, waving his wild tail and walking by his wild lone. And the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, which could disappear starting from the tail and ending up with a grin. And Dick Whittington, three times Lord Mayor of London, once a poor scullion with only one possession, a cat which was sold for a vast fortune to a Moorish ruler plagued with rats. And Puss in Boots, who managed to persuade a king that his penniless master, whom he called the Marquis of Carabas, was a fit suitor for his daughter, the princess. Beatrix Potter wrote about and painted pictures of a cat called Tom Kitten. And then, when moving pictures came along, it was only natural that some cat would become a star. century poet Christopher Smart was a bit more serious about it. I will consider my cat Geoffrey. He is of the tribe of Tiger. He will not do destruction if he is well fed, neither will he spit without provocation. He purrs in thankfulness when God tells him he is a good cat. He is an instrument for the children to learn benevolence upon. Every house is incomplete without him and a blessing is lacking in the spirit. 
He is the cleanest in the use of his four paws of any quadruped. God has blessed him in a variety of movements. Though he cannot fly, he is an excellent clamberer. For he is of the tribe of Tiger. The famous Dr. Johnson, who compiled the first English dictionary, had a cat called Hodge that he used to feed on oysters. Oysters! Blimey, that reminds me. I better put out another meal for Moggy. Tell you one thing, she's not getting any oysters. Oh, no. I always use this canned food. It's cheaper than fresh food and it's a balanced diet in itself. And it's so much easier than mucking about with fish, meat and liver and sterilized bone meal and fire mean and God knows what. He's a queer genius, old Sid. Always dashing around the place. But I must admit he looks after me well. And this food he doles out is a lot healthier than those snacks he's always grabbing between meals. Luckily for me, he has had the patience to read the instructions on the can, so I get my meals regularly. Clean dish, and unlike some cat owners, he doesn't try to pop me off with his leftovers. Frankly, I'd rather starve. Some cats do. You wouldn't believe how they suffer. Scratching out a living among the dustbins. Nobody neglects kittens, of course, they're quite irresistible. But you can overdo the affection bit. It's not a good idea to kiss cats of any age, and frankly, we don't go for it much either. Let's face it, it's no great mystery that we're so popular as pets. We're cuddly, we're clean, we don't take much looking after. We're not always demanding to be taken for walks, for example. And although we're strong individualists, every one of us, we're also very adaptable. Provided we're treated right, we get on fine with everyone. And when we grow out of the playful stage, we're a gentle, dignified people. As I say, everyone finds kittens irresistible. The trouble sometimes starts when they grow up. Would you believe it? I've even known people to take unwanted cats out into the country and dump them by the roadside. Other people go away on holiday and leave their cats to fend for themselves. Disgraceful. What a way to treat a house guest. Mind you, we cats are not entirely blameless in this matter. I'm afraid some of us have no idea when to stop. It isn't always easy to find good homes for all the members of a large unplanned family. And nobody likes to think about kittens being put down, however humanely it's done. If only people would take their cats to the vet and have them neutered. It's not the slightest bit painful and it saves so much sordid unpleasantness all round. People who keep tomcats have a certain responsibility too. It's just as simple and painless to have the same sort of neutering operation done on them. What odd notions some humans have about cats. That we won't go after mice, for example, unless they keep us half-starved. The plain truth is, you have to be jolly fit to catch a mouse. I ask you, could a half-starved athlete run a four-minute mile? But we don't have to catch mice all that often. The very presence of a cat around the place is quite enough to discourage rats and mice. And some people get a bit uptight about the fact that we cats often stalk birds. Well, why blame us? 
It's the hunting instinct which has survived 10,000 years of civilization. Because don't forget we come from the same family as all the big cats. There's another common human fallacy, that you always have to put the cat out last thing at night. Disastrous notion, just asking for trouble. I mean, one could get stolen or run over, couldn't one? What's wrong with providing proper toilet pans for use during the night? With modern brands of cat litter, there needn't be any smell. But do remember always to put it in the same place. It's such a bore having to search for it in the dark. How would you like it if they kept moving the loo? Like humans, cats are fussy about their sleeping arrangements. Some like baskets, but whatever the bed, it should be comfortable. Well out of the draught and, above all, clean. Talking about cleanliness, I must say I find grooming a bit of a bore. But it does help to keep us looking sleek and glossy. If one is unlucky enough to pick up a dose of fleas, and it can happen even in the best regulated households, you've got to be pretty careful about what dusting powder you use. And it's desperately important to brush it out properly. Because we spend so much time washing ourselves, if you use a powder with a lot of poison in it and don't brush it out, you may kill the parasites all right, but you're not going to do us any good. We long-haired cats particularly need daily grooming. Otherwise, we're in danger of swallowing our own fur, which can get into a tangled knot in our stomachs. It's surprising how many people keep pets and never think about looking at their teeth and gums. Animals can go through agonies with toothache, just like humans, with the one difference that we can't tell where it hurts. The same applies to a lot of other ailments, so a regular examination by the vet is essential. Just as essential as a medical checkup or a visit to the dentist is for you humans. There's a good fellow. Well, all right. Good. I'm off to the studio. Not that you care. You sleep most of the time, don't you? Never come across a pet that sleeps as much as a cat does. Mind you, in their wild state, big cats, like lions, also spend most of the day sleeping. Cats, all alike. Did you hear that? Cats are all alike. Never had such nonsense in my life. Leaving aside the fact that there are still some wild cats in Scotland, that is to say, naturally wild cats and not domestic cats that have gone wild, we household cats come in a positively bewildering variety of shapes and sizes. If you don't believe me, visit a cat show. You'll be staggered at how many different types of cats you'll see. Among the short-haired cats, there's the British Spotted, for instance. And the British Black. Then there are the foreign cats, like the Abyssinian and a whole variety of Siamese cats with varying colours on their ears, paws, mask and tail. And always popular, of course, the long-haired breeds. The smoke, the red and the cream. Then there are the chinchillas, particularly attractive as kittens. And the favourite, a blue Persian, of course. My second cousin twice removed, needless to say. I don't go much for prizes myself. A tin of decent cat food every day, as much fresh milk and water as I need, and a little bit of creature comfort. That's all I ask. Come on, Moggy. Out of there. Now, you know very well that this is the governor's chair. Come on, Here I've been all day at the studio, grafting away just to make a few pence to keep us both in comfort. And what have you been doing? Sleeping your blooming head off, haven't you? Just look at that cat. She thinks she owns the place. As a matter of fact, she does. <laughs>